Okay, well, we'll get started with the message today. And the message that I have entitled is, In God We Trust. Have any, you have all heard of that, uh, that title, right? In God We Trust, okay? Previously, uh, we discussed uh, two weeks ago, Remember, we were going over the message of the difficulty that Israel, uh, Judah, was facing. Do you remember kind of uh, that lesson? Uh, yeah, about the evil kings. Uh, uh, there was the, uh, the northern kingdom of Israel. Remember, we'll go back a little. The northern kingdom of Israel and was conquered by Assyrians. And then the southern, because it was split apart. Israel was split apart. And the, the other, the south... Which, which was comprised of Judah and Benjamin, the two tribes, which that is the one where the temple and everything was, uh, they uh, were being ruled by wicked kings because uh, the nation of Israel, God's people, uh, that came from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, had fallen into paganism, right? They were all messed up. Remember uh, uh, King Manasseh? We were talking about him, how messed up. He's a king of Israel, and he was pretty much uh, worshiping idols. Uh, he raised up uh, uh, altars of Baal inside the temple. Uh, he even sacrificed his own son to the uh, Canaanites god uh, Molech. So, I mean, this is a really bad king. And then his son was no better. In fact, he was even worse. Uh, the fortunate thing is that his son, Amnon, uh, only reigned for about three years, and they killed him. So that was good. And then uh, then his son uh, was Josias, which was one of the best kings that Israel had. So maybe kind of coming back a little, Manasseh sacrificed his son. He was uh, the, uh, he was uh, practiced witchcraft. Yeah, so basically, we were kind of discussing how bad Israel was had had sunken, basically. They had uh, forsaken. Remember, we said, why? Why did, uh, what happened? Remember, we were talking how they've forsaken uh, the fountains of living water, which today we refer to as Christ, right? He is our fountain of living water. And then we were saying they were cutting cisterns that hold no water. Remember, we're like, what is that? Remember, there was, we discussed that there were these huge tanks that were uh, built into the, the ground and they would hold water, but they were making broken ones, which kind of had the illusion that they were holding water, but it was leaking out. Just like in today's society, in today's uh, apostasy, even in the church, how we have these huge churches, and, and but it's just kind of just flowing out. P- you know, the message is not being preached. There's, not, there's a f- false conversion, and people are pretty much going in and going out and not receiving the true conversion uh, of Christ. And that is where we are today. And then we can see the similarities that we today as a nation have with the nation of Israel. We have wicked kings. We're ruled by paganism, you know, this great nation. So that's just a, a little recap of what kind of we're, uh, we were going over two weeks ago. Now, in Exodus 20, 3 through 6, it says, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath the earth. You shall not bow down to to down to them or serve them for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God. Let us pray. Father, creator of all the universe, we humble ourselves and we come before you to be able to engage and to, to look into your word and to your scripture that we may uh, learn and understand, Father, what you have in store for us. We surrender our lives to you and we ask for your wisdom that we may not make the, the, this, the, the mistakes, Father God, as previous generations, that we may learn from them and that we may together as a community, as a church, as a body, that we can grow together and we can escape the deception, the, the, uh, uh, the lies, Father God, that, that Satan and the world are, are constantly trying to push upon us. Only you can give us that because you are the truth and you are the life. In Jesus' name, we love you. Amen. Amen. Okay. So we kind of looked at that, like a recap of, of what we went over a couple weeks ago. And then, like I said, the title of the message is called In God We Trust. Now, 
when we were talking about two weeks ago, I was going to kind of talk about what similarities we as a nation of the United States of America have to the same kind of the same uh, route that that the people of Israel were going through. And I I, I saw a lot of similarities. Uh, You know, Israel was was had fallen. They had fallen into paganism. They had evil rulers. They were just all over the place. And remember, we were talking about how how many believe that the United States was founded on, on, on Christian principles, right? I mean, that's exactly the way I was taught in school or, I don't know, on TV or whatever. That, you know, the pilgrims came and, and they made friends with the Indians and, and the Puritans and all these people. And they would get on their knees and they would pray to God and, you know, their Bible and stuff like that. And sure, that is true. But I'm going to tell you right now that that is a very, very small portion of our nation's history. And if we st- and what we're going to do is we're going to kind of just scratch the surface a little and look at what we are as a nation, as the great nation of the United States. Are we following into the same trap as Israel? Are we walking today thinking that we are a great nation of Christianity when in fact we are being uh, deceived by Satan and that we are really living in a pagan nation and we are just trying the best to kind of stay up above water. Remember, Satan is very good at deceiving. He's the, the you know, the, the father of lies. And sometimes we think, well, you know, no, nah, he's not going to trick me or I'm not going to fall for those same traps. But remember, he tricked one, uh, uh, one third of the angels. He, Adam and Eve. I mean, we're talking about people that were very high in wisdom and knowledge. And he was able to deceive them. So we should never be like almost underestimate how powerful the deception, how powerful the lies can be. And we a lot of times can be walking and doing things and we are living in that deception. The only way that we can combat the lies and deception is through his word. Because he says, the truth shall set you free. Okay? that's going to be important. That's a a phrase that we're going to be talking about a lot. The truth shall set you free, right? Who is the truth? Christ. Christ. Amen. All right. So are we living, are we one nation under God? Like I said, that is the motto of uh, the United States of America. And when I was looking into it, and all, pretty much all the history. And you got to kind of look into it a little. And and there's a lot of stuff. You can even get into like conspiracies and things like that. But I'm just going to look at things that you could pretty much look on history.com and books and stuff like that. Nothing that is pretty much hidden. It's pretty much there. You can just, if you just research a little. So, are we living in a nation under God? If so, what God? That's the thing that we need to look at. You know, there's many gods out there, pagan gods, not the God, but there's many gods that are people that, the, you know, that are being worshipped. So when, when you look at your, like when you pull out a dollar bill or, or, or some of your money and say, in God we trust, sometimes you have to wonder, what God are they talking about? Are they talking about the God of the Bible? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? I mean, Right, right away, we think when we see that in God we trust, we're like, oh, yeah, they're talking about Yeshua, the king of kings, right? But are they? Well, let's look into a little bit of the history. Uh, So, like I said, are we in the same position as Judah? Are we one nation under God? Now, when you look at our history and you just look at the, they they like to call them the founding fathers, right? The presidents and, and different. I was looking into it and then right away, uh, you start seeing that there's a pattern. Pretty much the majority of the American presidents were something called Freemasons. Ever, everyone ever heard of the term Freemasons? Yeah? I mean, it's nothing like hidden or nothing. I mean, actually, they've done movies on it. Anyone ever seen the movie uh, National Treasures with Nicolas Cage? They're pretty good movies, right? Well, I mean, there they, they, they talk about Freemason, right? They talk about the presidents, and they were all Freemasons and, and this and that. So it's not a conspiracy or anything like that. The thing that people don't tell you about or you don't learn in school is what they stood for. 
if you just look in just a little bit and then you start reading the different presidents and, and, and what Freemasons stand for, I mean, their creed and their oath that they have to, to learn and have to fall by, it is pretty much an occult. I mean, it's uh, the things, the rituals and the, the things that they do, it is nowhere close to being Christian. I'll tell you right now. So a lot of times, you know, when you see the, the, the image of George Washington, you know, kneeling and, you know, praying, you know, and his hand, has his hands and we're like, oh, look, see, he was, a, you know, a man of God, you know. We don't know who he's praying for, but I guarantee you if he's a Freemason, the way these were, they were probably not praying to the God of the Bible. Now, we have different presidents like George Washington, uh, James Monroe, Andrew Jackson, James K. Polk, uh, James Buchanan, Andrew Johnson, James A. Garfield, William McKinley, Theodore Roosevelt, William H. Taft, Warren Harding, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry S. Truman, General Ford, Lyndon B. Johnson. Then you have Nixon, Reagan, the Bushes, the Clintons, Obama, and etc. And these are the ones that you could just say, like, they actually, you can go to Google and you can say, oh, yeah, they are Freemasons. There's a lot of them, of course, that are a little more, more secret. You know, they kind of keep it to themselves. But basically, what I'm trying to get at is that we believe that we are a nation founded on Christian values, you know. But then when you look at our history, we can see how easy it is as a people, how easy it is to be deceived. How deep does the lies and the deception of Satan go? Now, how does this affect us? How, I mean, like, you're probably telling me, like, so what? You know, I mean, yeah, so they lied to me in school or they lied to me on TV or whatever. Or maybe they don't lie, but they just don't tell me the whole truth. Well, I'm telling you, the people of Israel, the same thing happened to them. You know, they were living under these pagan rulers and, and kings and stuff like that. It didn't start like that, really. But little by little, they were following. And, and so all the people in, in Israel, there's a lot of good people. But little by little, they were living under the deception. They, they thought that they were doing the right things. They were like, whoa, I guess our kings, you know, they are worshiping, you know, Baal and Moloch and all these things. I guess that's okay. I guess we just change it up a little. And that is what led to the destruction of Israel. That's why they kept falling. That is where they started making their mistakes. They forsaken the living water, which is Christ, and they started falling into paganism. And I'm telling you today... We, as a church, as a body of Christ, have to kind of keep awake, kind of stay vigilant because these things are happening today and have been happening for a while. But I believe that in your generation, especially how I was talking a couple of weeks ago, is going to be the generation that starts that revolution to be able to open your eyes and open your ears and be able to preach the gospel, but a true gospel, a gospel saying, hey, wake up. Hey, open your eyes. It is not, it, this, we are being deceived dramatically, especially in the end days. There is going to be uh, so much deception and so much illusions of, uh, that, that Satan is going to portray. Amen. Okay, so right off we see right here uh, that the majority of uh, the presidents were uh, and foundings, and not just presidents, but like senators and all that were Freemasons. They call them Illuminatist. Uh, they were members of something called the Hellfire Club, which is basically a cult. Uh, they, they're anything f close to being Christian. They know the Christian lingo. And a lot of times we can give it trick play, like like when they you know they are, like I said before when they're on the campaign uh, trail they know how to talk, they know what to say, but the the truth is it's just um, like I said it's just a lingo they're just trying to to trick us right they're trying to to tickle your ear kind of say what you want to hear or want to want to hear but how do we know we judge them by their fruits that is how we know where uh how to judge people is by their fruits god says judge them by their fruits so in god we trust so i'd like to ask again how many believe that we are a nation founded on christian values In god we trust what god are we talking about obviously we serve the god of abraham isaac and jacob yeshua 
But what is the foundation of this nation founded upon? And, that, and, and just to kind of give you a sense of how easy it is to be deceived. So if you, uh, if I had like slides or something I could show you, but like even if you just pulled out a dollar bill, does anyone have a dollar bill? Y'all can just look at like the back of your, you know, your dollar bill. Y'all could pull it out. Everyone, I don't know if anyone has, carries cash anymore, you know. I think it's on the dollar bill. I only have hundreds. No, I just playing. <laughs> I mean, uh, vessels. Um, well, if you look at your dollar bill on the back, right away you see a couple of Im- images, right? Remember, this is a Christian nation, okay? Okay, first of all, you see the two great seals on either side. And uh, let's look at the, mo- it, first of all, you see on one side, you see like a pyramid, right? I don't know if you, if you can see, it's like a pyramid and it has like an eye on top. Well, the eye is uh, the eye of uh, Osiris or uh, Hor- uh, Horus, and basically it's the all-seeing eye, right? Have you ever heard of that? The all-seeing eye, you know, the, the eye of Horus, uh, which is uh, the eye of Osiris. Osiris was the main god of the Egyptians, right? Egypt worshipped Osiris, and so and then you have this pyramid, so it looks very Egyptian. So first of all, it was like, Wait a minute. It kind of makes you think a little. We're like a nation founded upon Christian values. Why in the world do we have a pyramid, Egyptian pyramid and Egyptian gods on our currency? You know, sometimes we just do things and we just go through the motion, but we don't really think about it. It's like, did anyone ever question that or everyone ever think about that? Or you probably heard these things before, but like you're saying like, why is that? What's going on? Are we being led into paganism? Uh, you look at uh, other things. Like, okay, uh, another thing that <laughs> it got me when I started looking into it. Has anyone ever been to the nation's capital? I, I've never been. Probably not. I've been to, we've been to Mexico, right? We go to Mexico. We don't go to, anyone ever been to Washington, D.C.? Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. So uh, if you go into the nation's capital, uh, and, and, you know, you can even Google it and you could, or YouTube it and stuff like that. But when you go in, you know, they have a lot of like like statues and paintings and artwork all through it. Right. In fact, when uh, I was looking into it and, and you see like the tour guide, the tour guide usually comes in and says, welcome to the uh, the temple of worship. This is a temple. They don't call it the capital. They call it a temple. Right. So I was thinking, like, what are temples for? Well, temples are for worship, right? I mean, you worship. So then I was like, well, who are they worshiping? Well, first of all, right when you walk into the capital, they have this huge statue, right? It's a statue of a woman. And the name of the woman uh, will get, well, actually, first of all, what does Washington, D.C. stand for? Uh, or the capital? Well, D- District of Columbia, right? Well, we know what district is. So what is what does Columbia mean? Has anyone ever thought about that? District of Columbia? Or who is Columbia? Ever thought about that? Well, Columbia is an actual, is, an, is the goddess. Uh, um, it's a goddess. So when you walk into the capital, there's a huge stat- statue of Columbia. You know, she kind of looks and resembles, it's, it's pretty much the same thing as the Statue of Liberty. Pretty much the same person, right? So when they walk in and they're like, welcome to the temple of worship. And who, they have this huge, huge idol, if you want to say, and it's of her. So basically, they're worshiping this Columbia goddess or whatever. So right away, I'm like, okay, that's weird, you know. And then you start going in and then you start seeing all the different like artworks and like paintings and stuff like that. And it's crazy. Like, I feel like if there's... Three gods that the United States is obsessed with, like in capital and everything. It's going to be um, Osiris, Egyptian god, Zeus, and Apollo. They're all over the place. They name their programs after it. They name the planets and everything. Everything's always named after these Greek and, and Egyptian gods. And, you know, and then so you go in and you remember, nation under God, right? This is the, the nation founded on Christian values, right? Right? You go into the capital, and the last thing you're going to see is, like, I mean, I don't know. Should we see, like, pictures of, like, Noah? 
like Noah's Ark and his animals or something or Moses or the Ten Commandments or the disciples? Or what about Jesus or the cross? No. There's pretty much nothing like that in the whole capital and all the areas around. And I say, well, that's strange. Like, what do we, the, what, what's there then? No, instead you got pictures of Osiris and, 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 and images of, of all these pagan gods and stuff like that and Greek gods and stuff like that. And I was like, one nation under God and God we trust. What God are we talking about? I mean, to me, if they were talking about the God of the Bible, to, I would think that there would be, I don't know, something about the Christian, you know, uh, Bible or something. Like I said, uh, put put a picture of David and Goliath, you know, right there or something. But no, instead you have Zeus and Jupiter and Venus and all these gods and stuff like that all over the place. What I'm trying to get at, and there's a lot of information. Like I said, I'm barely scratching the surface of like the different things and what they mean. But as far as time, we don't have much time. But what I want you all to leave with, with the idea, is that we have to seek the truth. Because the truth will set you free. And when we don't look for the truth, which is through his word, through his Holy Spirit, that is when deception falls in. That's when the apostasy of the church comes in. When we start making, start having a fall away, you know? We have to seek the truth because the truth will set you free. Um. It, other things too, and uh, I see if I have a little time. Like when I was looking at just like the, the the number thirteen. Now everybody knows the number thirteen. Usually when we think of the thir- uh, number thirteen, you think of like bad luck, right? Like Friday the thirteenth, or like uh, elevators. You don't usually have the the thirteenth, do they? I don't know that did right. They usually skip the thirteenth floor or something like that because it's like a, a bad omen or bad luck or something like that. And I really never understood that. Like it was just oh okay. But when I started looking into it, I, it was basically the, the number 13 rep- represents Osiris, the god of Egypt, because he pretty much had bad luck because he lost his eye, and then his son Horus gave him his eye. It's a lot of stuff. You don't have to look into it. But, but basically, that's why the number 13 represented him as bad luck or whatever, and that's where the eye of the all-seeing eye comes from. But our country is basically... Um, you know how seven is like uh, the perfect number represents God? Well, 13 represents all these pagan idols. And 13 is pretty much the main number that the United States, we have, what, 13 colonies, uh, 13 stripes, 13 stars, 13 steps on the pyramids, right, on that money. We've got 13 arrows, 13 eagles, 13 letters in E pluribus unum, uh, 13 leaves, 13 olive branches. It's everywhere representing the god of Osiris, a pagan god. So, you know, when when you start looking at this, huh? OB Town, did they have? Oh, there you go, OBT. You know, <laughs> there you go. So don't pick the number thirteen. You know, thirteen uh, represents. Uh, the occult. It represents pagan idols, the Egyptian god o- Osiris. All these things that. When you start looking at it, like, man, this is so surprising. This is shocking. I thought we were founded as a Christian nation. That is how Satan deceives us. And we think that sometimes we're walking and everything is going well, but little by little. See, when the enemy tries to destroy, just like the, the nation of Israel, he doesn't come full force. He comes within they come within the nation and starts corrupting from within, just like the church. We come within with false messaging, with false senses of uh, a prosperity, of a false sense of, of of salvation, and that is what we're we're battling today. We have to seek the truth. We have to open our eyes because the truth will set you free. Amen. So, like I said. All these things that when we start looking into our nation's capital, and there is so much, like like I was saying before, Columbia. You know, I said Columbia was this goddess. She goes by many names. Uh, and when I was looking it up, she goes by the name Ishtar, which a lot of people, if you heard of like Easter, right? 
comes from that. She's the god goddess of fertility. She goes by the name of Ishtar, Columbia, Liberty, like Statue of Liberty, Isis, Diana, Venus. And it's when you really look into it, and it's crazy, I, I, I kind of went in a little, but it's actually the wife of Nimrod. Now, does everyone know who Nimrod is? Nimrod was a bad dude, right? Y'all know who he was? The pretty much the ruler of the world uh, after the flood, uh, after years, a couple of generations after the flood. He was the one that built the Tower of Babel, right? Okay, so basically, his wife was horrible too, and uh, that's where basically the United States is building idols and stuff. Was we are worshiping the wife of Nimrod? How about that? All right, nope, no pictures of Jesus. No, no, uh, nothing about, not even Catholic, even Catholics have like idols and stuff, but at least they're like of Mary and stuff like that, which is not good either. But, <laughs> but what I'm saying is like, at least they're trying to fake it. Uh, the United States, they're, they're not even close to it. They, I mean, they got these pagan gods and stuff like that all over the place. And so then we look into that and we're like, we have been led astray. And this happens all the time. Because remember how we were saying, if we don't learn from history, we're doomed to repeat it, right? Just like the nation of Israel. Oh, there you go. The Columbia. The, I forgot about that. The movie thing. See? Show them. Like, like on the movie thing. That's her. All of her favorite, favorite movies are basically uh, pretty much the wife of Nimrod. And what happened is during that time, of course, that's when God... Uh, once they sinned, that's when God confused the nations, right? And everyone went in uh, on to, to their own. That is why a lot of times, uh, e pluribus unum, does anyone know what that means? Probably not, because I didn't either until I looked it up. Huh? Oh, there you go. Out of many come one. Okay, good. So out of many come one. I always thought, and I was taught in school, that this was because the United States is the melting pot of the world, Right? But no, it's because out of many, it drives exactly from Nimrod. Out of many come one. Basically, it's because when the, all the nations set apart, remember, they were all worshiping one guy, Nimrod, and his wife. Okay? But then when it all got confused and all the nations separated, then all of a sudden, over here, you know, you got the Egyptians and the Canaanites and the Am Ammonites and all these places. They were all worshiping different gods, different names, because the language changed, but it was the same person. They were all still worshiping this god, uh, or to them, it was the god of Nimrod, you know? But it was, the same, it was the same person. And when you look through history, they all have the same similarities, right? So all these nations, all these pagan nations and stuff like that during the time were all still worshiping the same person. Out of many come one. Amen. Uh, so we... So I ask you again, are we a nation under God? If, if I say, which God? We, though, as Christians, as a Christian church, we're the only ones, we have to be the light of the world. So just because, yeah, we are founded and we have these dark, uh, dark past and we, we're pretty much a, a pagan nation, let's go ahead and just accept the truth because the truth will set you free. We have to come up. That's why I was saying this generation is the generation that I believe can make that revolution, can open our eyes and say we're not going to be deceived. We're not going to be tricked because that is what is happening, and it's happening even in the church today. We have to wake up. We have to be able to, to uh, understand that Satan is very crafty. G, uh, and, uh, let me read, uh see, we must, see, what was the verse I was looking for? Uh, okay, Matthew 7, 15 through 20, and I don't have too much time, but it says, Even so, every good tree bringeth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. So let us just open our eyes and look around. And then we start looking at their fruits and see, are, this, are they Christian? Are they serving Yeshua, the King of Kings, or not? You judge them by their fruits, not by their lingo and by how they talk. 
And, and by the, they're, they're, you know, the way they're trying to present themselves, by their fruits. Um, and in 1 Corinthians it says, Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. And that is something so important because I believe that is in the position that we are today, especially in the church. See, it says, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in truth. The, 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 the key, the most perfect person, Jesus, was so good at preaching because when he preached the gospel, he preached truth. Today, we have fallen away from that because today we like to, uh, I think today even the church has been so concerned about just getting people in and just in any way necessary and to keep them there, but we're not preaching the truth. And that is evil because love preaches the truth. And that is why today there is such a falling away. The Bible says there is going to be an apostasy of the church that has to happen before his coming. And we, as a church, must start opening our eyes and say, no, I'm going to preach the truth. Yeah, I might be a little harsh saying this message. And the people, some people might be like, whoa, I don't want to go there. They don't, they don't teach about being rich and having prosperity and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, there's a, a quote. I won't say the name, but it's like, live your best life now. Isn't that, it kind of goes like that? Live your, you're living your best life now or something like that. Well, I guarantee you, if you follow that motto, you will be living your best life now. Because after this, it's going to be a lot worse, okay? So we have to wake up and understand that our best life now is not here. We're not living for prosperity and for healing. All those things do come. But that is not the key. The key is to finish the race, to continue carrying our cross, and to one day be in the presence of the Almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. So let me just finish up today with we must open our eyes to the truth and not be deceived. We must continually search Scripture and seek Christ for his guidance um, and not be led astray. Like I said before, this generation is the generation that can start that revolution. So let us start it by, sp by spreading the gospel of truth because the truth will set you free. So in God we trust, we serve Christ. That's the God we serve. And we are going to make it known by our fruits and we will spread the truth because the truth will set you free. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks today for this wonderful opportunity, and we humble ourselves to you, Father. We ask that you give us eyes to see and ears to hear, that we may not be deceived by the world and by Satan, that we may continuously search your word, and that your Holy Spirit may guide us to make the right decisions. We know that we are living in the end days. We know that we are living in dark times, and we know that more than ever, this is the time to rise up. We know that you will give us the strength, that you will give us the wisdom, that we just have to have faith in you, and that your prosperity and that your love will fall upon us. We love you so much, Father, because we know that you are the truth and the life. And we love you with all our hearts. In Jesus' name, we give you praise and we say, amen. amen.